Hi everyone, Linda Israel here. Today I'm going to show you how to make a fabric cover for your junk journals using chipboard and fabric and it's designed to fit a junk journal that's made by an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper folded in half. So in this case it is five and a half by eight and a half is what the inside pages are going to be and I do this a lot so I make it try to make it easy and I do not to make my journals just slightly larger the covers that is than my inside so if you were to line this up and look you'll have a little bit of a gap all the way on three sides because it'll be flush on this side and those measurements are six inches by nine inches and I've cut double the amount because I'm going to glue these together to make it a little bit sturdier because my chipboard's a little bit thinner. You know, you could use a cereal box, a, a smooth box, several layers of chipboard to get the same result. So this piece is six by nine. This is one and a half by nine and six by nine again. Then I cut a piece of fabric that is about, when you put the th three pieces lined up together, about an inch of all the way around extra. And in this case, this piece of fabric measures 15 and a quarter inches by 10 and a half inches. And then I have some leftover bits. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to go ahead and adhere all of these together stacked on one top of the other so that they'll be stronger and they won't move around on me. So I'm just using Aline's tacky glue and going down and around and zigzag through the middle. And then I'll stack these together like so. and smooth those out and I'll do the same here. So now that I have those adhered on top of each other, I'm going to line this up, making sure I get them in the center. So I'm gonna find the center. This one's gonna go beside it. Now you need to leave a gap between the spine and the cover so that the cover can move without buckling. If you've ever made a journal cover and had it buckle on you because these two were hitting each other. So you want to smooth that out and leave a little bit of a gap between those. And what I like to do is I start with the center. So I'll pick this up and adhere it directly to the fabric. Now you'll want to use a nice fabric that you can't see through. If you do have a see-through fabric, just use two layers or find another color to go underneath to cover up the chipboard. And I just glue them as one layer all together. Don't put a lot of glue on your chipboard when you're adhering to fabric because it can seep through to the front. So I'm putting a very light amount of glue. It is white, but it does dry clear. And I find that I really don't need a whole lot of glue to keep this together. Again, I'm making sure that I leave a gap in the middle here. So now what I'm gonna do is start adhering the fabric to the inside. And what I like to do is I start with the corner. So I'll put a little bit of glue on the corner of the fabric and then I will fold it to the inside, making a nice neat corner. And just take your time and smooth it out and then it won't buckle up on you. I'm gonna do that to all the corners. All right, now that I've got all the corners done, I will start putting glue on the sides and folding them in. Then I'll do the top and the bottom. All right, so while that is drying just a little bit, I'll talk about the inside and then we'll finish putting this together. So what I've done is I've taken a 12 by 12 sheet of cardstock and I've trimmed it to be eight and three quarters tall by five and three quarters wide. Then I had the leftover piece and that's gonna be in the center. 
I also have a couple of pieces of fabric that I thought would make great pockets. So I know I'm going to go to the sewing machine in a moment, and I want to get all this prepared. So what I'm doing is I'm looking at this piece of fabric, and I want to fold over just a little bit of this edge. You can finger press it. I'll go ahead, just put a little bit of glue on here, and then fold it up. Just to hold it in place and it ensures that I have the same measurement because there's nothing like putting it together and you don't have it the same size so I'll move this up and then I'm going to go to my sewing machine and I'm going to stitch right across the top of this piece and then I'll be right back all right so I've got these pieces sewn the next thing that I want to do is I want to make this into a pocket that goes over this piece of cardstock. So I'm going to line this up. I'll move these out of the way for a moment. So I'm going to line this up on my mat here just so I can kind of get an idea. One, two, three and a half ish about. It's okay if this is a little bit longer. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim off this bottom section just a little bit and I'll do the same with this one I like this rotary cutter and since I've got my mat it makes it so much easier all right so there's hardly any fabric for me to wrap around but I am gonna try to wrap this really carefully so I'm gonna pull the corners in and wrap that So you want to make sure you leave yourself enough room whenever you're using fabric to be able to wrap it. You could just glue it directly, but I want to make sure that I have the full pocket available to me. I'm just putting a little bit of glue on the sides, and then I'll wrap this to the back. And basically, since I'm going to be sewing this, I just want to make sure that this isn't going to come undone. If I weren't sewing this, I would either attach another piece of paper or fabric on this back side. You could even use tape to tape it down. And then I'm going to fold up the bottom. And I'm going to repeat this on the other half of the cover. All right, so they'll give that a moment to dry. And while I'm getting the covers ready, this is my front cover. And I have a image from the Daydreaming Kit that is one of the journal cards, but I thought it would look really pretty on the front of this. So I'm going to use some Distress Inks around the edge. And I think I want to put this on the front, and I'm trying to decide if I just want to, I think I'm just going to put it directly down onto the cover. So I'm looking at it, trying to get it somewhat centered, and I'm going to glue it in place so it doesn't move around on me looking at my cover kind of finding the center and then I'm going to hear that into place all right so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my sewing machine and I'm going to sew all the way around the outside perimeter I'm going to sew around this piece and I'm also going to sew onto my inside pieces that are going to go on here so let's switch to the other camera so I'm just going to set up my sewing machine. It's just a zigzag stitch that I have on my sewing machine. Um, standard sewing needle, standard thread. What I suggest to people that they're going to use their sewing machine is to find out what your user manual says for the settings of each stitch that you're using and leave those settings. Don't mess with them and you'll have it right every time you use it. So I'm just going to do a zigzag stitch right around the edge. What I do is I'll pick up my presser foot and then rotate my piece, and then that'll give me a nice crisp corner. All right, so now I'm gonna just sew around the image. And that's been sewn around. So now what I'm gonna do is, this is gonna be the center spine, and I wanna sew across the top and the bottom, just so that it'll have consistency when you look at the inside cover. You'll see in a moment what I mean. And now what I'm going to do is sew all the way around on this piece. 
All right, so all of our pieces have been sewn and are ready to go for the next step. So as you can see, the stitches, here's what I like to start with. I go ahead and I'll adhere down what's going to be the center portion of the journal. So I'm going to use my Aline's Tacky Glue and I'm going to put it right across the top, kind of where the stitches are as well, across the bottom. The perimeter down the middle and then I find that I like to go ahead and put glue on the chipboard as well especially where the pieces are joining because I want to make sure that this is really well adhered together this piece of cardstock in the middle kind of helps give your journal some more stability so we're going to get centered from left to right and top to bottom. So I wanna make sure that I have enough space at the top and the bottom and that it's all nice and even. I'm gonna use my bone folder and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press and that glue may seep out to the sides and that's okay. I just wanna make sure that I've got it really well adhered down. And then what I'll do is I'll figure out where the bins are and I'm going to take my bone folder and run it down in that crease. You don't want to go all the way through. You just want it enough that that paper kind of has a, some place to go in that crease. And it strengthens your cover. All right. And now let's go ahead and put the side panels on. You see how it's coming together? We're going to put some glue across here. And I'm going to line it up and match it to the spine piece. And then again, I will press it with my bone folder to make sure that it's adhered. And you've made a cover. Isn't that pretty simple? How we put that together and how it looks. And it's going to be nice and sturdy because we use the thicker chipboard or two layers of chipboard. All right, so here's where you can do a traditional binding and bind your signatures to the spine, or you can create a Midori cover. And that's what I'm gonna do. I'm also going to punch holes on the sides here so we can have a tie to tie the journal close. So I'm just gonna get my crop -a dial and what I'm gonna do is look at this, kind of eyeball it, and I think that this should be the center of the journal cover, and it may or may not fit in here let me see oh it will all right so I'm just gonna push my crop a dial in here and punch all the way through it's cut gonna cut the fabric and the chipboard and make a hole in my cover in the center and then let's make a tie to go on there and then we'll show you how to make the Midori cover I'm getting some snug hug seam binding in an ivory color or white I'm gonna get a little bit Let's see how much I want. I like to have a little bit of a length when I tie it. So I'm looking at this. I'm going to double it. I think that's what I want right there. So if you want to know the measurements, I again, I just kind of guess, okay? But we'll kind of measure this out for you. So if I start, let me double it so that way you can see. So if I start here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So 4 times 13. <laughs> That's what I would suggest. All right, so what I'm going to do is we're going to spray this with Tattered Angel's Glimmer Mist. So I'm going to get my spray box that I like to spray things in. Just getting it ready here. And what I'm going to do is just kind of free flow, kind of mess it around there's a lot of color in this journal so i think i'm going to mix it up just a little bit and use a pink maybe a green some purple maybe even a blue so i've got different colors of tattered angels these are all from the royal peacock paint set and this was from the royal peacock kit and i think i'm going to shake these all up see which ones i want to use here i think i'm going to use Let's do a little bit of the green on here. So I'm going to spritz that just in a couple of places. 
It's okay if it moves around. I'm gonna put a little bit of the pink on here. And let's do this tealy kind of color. Oh, I think I'm liking this because it's the tealy kind of color is helping the others blend together. I'm gonna add a little bit more pink. And it'll come out a little more pastel. I'm not even gonna use the green the other purple. I'm going to dry this with my heat tool. Now I know it looks really dark on camera, but it's not that dark in person. I really like how this turns out whenever you dye it yourself. So I'm just going to take this and cut it in half. Now I've got a little string here. So what I'm going to do is take this and fold it in half. I'm going to take my string through the folded side and I'm going to pull it through this hole. I find it's easier to try to get fibers through a hole if you use a smaller fiber or thread. And then I'm just going to pull this through on itself. Okay, and then I'll repeat that on the back side. So now we have the tie. So now let's work on the inside where we're going to put the Midori elastic. All right, so whenever I make a journal, I make a little template. And if I was going to go ahead and sew the signatures direct on here, I would use this template to mark out all the holes that I need to punch. Well, it also doubles to help me in marking where I need to put the holes for the elastic for the Midori style cover. So pardon me while I get on top of this to look. All right, so what I'm going to do is I want... A hole in the center and I want a hole here and a hole here so I've got three marks at the top and then I'm going to come down here to the bottom and do the same thing and make three marks so now I can see those and I save my template I have a little uh, bag that I put it in and now what I'm gonna do is take my crocodile again but this time I want the smaller hole and um, this is I think it's a one eighth of a hole inch so I'm gonna go in here and punch the holes again it'll go all the way through all the layers and I'm gonna do this on this side now some people like to go ahead and put eyelets I don't you don't have to if you don't want to it really depends upon how heavy your cover is if your cover is really flimsy then you may want to put grommets on there but I don't and then I'm going to use jewelry elastic so this is elastic that you see in most craft stores in the jewelry department I believe I got this at either Joann's or Michael's um, you can also buy it on the internet I'll try to provide a link uh, in the description box for those of you that want to be able to buy this and what I have found is if I start on the inside and I'm going to start on this first hole I'm going to be putting three inserts into this journal but I'm going to go ahead and have four bands so that if you want you could put a fourth journal in here and basically I'm just feeding this started here went to the front down up and then I'm back here at the beginning of the top and what I'll do is I'm going to push this back through the hole and sometimes you have to help it so I'm going to get my scissors to kind of poke it through because it's a tight hole when you've already got one fiber already through it all right so I've got that that's going to go to the center here so now what I need to do is I need to cut a length. So I'm going to go through this hole at the bottom and then we're going to come back up again. So I just make it just a little bit longer. I'm going to go through this hole at the bottom. Okay. And then I'm going to poke back through this hole beside it. And you don't want these so tight that your cover starts to curl. So you just want to make sure that they're nice and even. And then all I do is bring these together and tie them in a knot. You can tie it more than once if you want. I'm going to cut off a little bit of the excess so it doesn't hang past the bottom of the journal. So that way, if you need to 
tighten it back up again. You can untie this and tighten it back up. So now all that's left is to put the journals inside. So we'll do that in just a moment. All right, now that the cover is complete, let's put the journals that go inside. So I have another tutorial that shows you how to make these little tag booklets. So I'm not going to go over them here. And those are going to go into the front and back covers. And then during a live stream that was held on April the 29th, I show how to make this journal using the chipboard piece that comes in the kit, the different pages and elements that I had from the kit, and some things from my stash as well. And so that's going to go in the front of this Midori cover. And then I've got a couple more of the journals that were made. This one has a tutorial for the page that you see here and then here is the third journal now there are four bands so there is a little bit of room to add a very thin journal in here but that is the way this comes together you can see you have a nice little pretty knot to tie up there and that is the junk journal with the cover well, I hope you enjoyed seeing this. I hope it inspires you and you see how easy it is to make a Midori style cover for your junk journal inserts. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Use the comment box down below. Check the description box for links to the products that I use as well as my YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all of those, my groups and everything. All right. Thanks so much for watching. You have a fabulous day. Bye, everybody.